I think I've, I've grown as a writer. I've grown as a person. You know, I wrote the original book, Star Crosses, 13, 14 years ago, something like that, when I came up with the idea for Helen and Lucas. And um, I've just, I hope I've gotten better. Like, that's sort of been my goal as a writer. I know I'll never write the perfect book, but for me, it's about trying to get better with every draft, every time I sit down to write, trying to become a better writer and use the tools that I know about, be more honest when I come to the page. So, hello. It's Hi. great to have you again. It's good to How see you. How are you feeling? Um, a little under the weather, and the weather is pretty low. So, whatever the weather is, I'm a little under it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been a dreary time in Los Angeles for the past few weeks. So, but I'm okay. And you? I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Uh, the semester has has been crazy, but it's really good to talk to you. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, what you're up to, what your new book is about, and why we're talking about Timeless? Right. Um, so I'm Josephine Angelini. I'm the author of the Starcross series and book five, right? Book five, Timeless, is coming out um, April 4th. Is it 4th? You know this better than I do. I'm terrible at stuff like this. Oh, my God. So it comes out the first week of April, and uh, it is a continuation of Helen and Lucas's story. So for those of you who know the first three books, uh, Starcrossed, Dreamless, and Goddess, this is a continuation of their story rather than a prequel or a continuation of that prequel series that I've got going on for the Starcross series. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, we're talking about Timeless. Exactly. And why Timeless? Why did you come up with this idea such a long time after writing Starcrossed. What is it about? This story that got me going again. Um, so I hate time travel stories, just to let you know. I hate it. I think it's a device. Nobody uses it properly. If you change something, like an event in the past, the future doesn't happen. So why would you go back and change it anyway? And I happen to like come up with an idea that involves the Titan Cronus, who is the titan of time like he's the master of all time in the universe um and where i left off at the end of goddess which is the i thought it was the end of helen and lucas's story i had a lot of readers coming back to me saying that's not the end she still owes the titans this favor there's there was all this unsettled business that i thought and i was like oh okay well maybe that is unsettled or at least it's it's an opportunity and so the door was always open but i was like i'm done i'm not writing anymore in this series and then I had an idea and it was like my worst, like, I hate time travel. I think time travel stories are a cop out, right? Like they are a way people can fix things that can't be fixed. So if there's always like an escape hatch for the choices that you make, then what's the point of making a choice is the way that I've always looked at it. And then I had an idea for a time travel story and I was like, oh, this is terrible. Like I'm going to have to do something about it. The majority of Timeless is not set in 1993. There really is only one thing that they need to go back in time and, and do. And it gives Helen this opportunity to see her mother as her age, like an 18-year-old girl, like a young woman. And um, just story-wise, character-wise, plot device-wise, this idea, it just had a lot of value to me. And I felt like it was a great way to continue the story. And I never write a book unless I can't stop thinking about it. Like that's my one thing. Like if I can't put the idea away and just shut the door on it, that means that I have to write it regardless of whether or not it makes sense. So I continued the series because I couldn't stop thinking about this one idea. So like you said, Helen is going back to 1993 to talk to her mom. How was it for you to combine those two stories of Scions and and star-crossed, was it difficult for you? How was it to combine those protagonists? Mm, it wasn't hard at all. Daphne, uh, who is the protagonist in Scions, which is the prequel to the star Cross series, she's so clear and so different in my mind from Helen, right? Like there's no 
confusion as to the way that those characters feel when I'm thinking my way through, well, what would Daphne do or what would Helen do? They're exact opposites. Like there's, they would literally never make exactly the same choice, even though they have pretty much the same value set, right? Like they're both trying to do something in this world, the star cross world that I've created that overlaps. Like both of them want, you know, to free themselves from the fates and yet neither of them would go about it in the same way. So for me, it was, it was, it was, it just, it wasn't hard. It was just one of those things that made absolute sense to me because I know Daphne so well from the scions, from writing scions. And because I know Helen so well from all of the books I've written with her before, it just made sense. It was one of those things that was pretty effortless. Tell me about the creation process then. Like you said, you couldn't think, stop thinking about it. And that's how it developed. But how did you start writing? How did you finish writing? How long did it take? What ups and downs did you go through? Mm -hmm. So I always do. I'm an, I'm an outliner. I'm one of those people who's, like, especially if I'm going to write, <laughs> going to try to write like a time travel story, you have to make sure all your ducks in, are in a row. Like you can't do anything where you create a paradox or where you step outside the lines of what actually makes sense. You know what I mean? Because th that's a... Th you gotta get the logic right. So I'm, I'm an outliner and I plot everything out. I change stuff as I go, as long as it doesn't contradict any of the choices that I've made for the ending. But, um, so I had the idea and the first thing that I did was I sat down and I started working on my outline and I made my character arcs. I'm, I'm actually very disciplined when it comes to writing like that. I don't, I don't wing it. I'm not one of those people who says like, oh, let's see what happens. No, I know, I, I know my ending before I get there. And then I give myself a certain amount of time to finish writing the book because, you know, I've got release schedules and deadlines and um, I decide whether or not I'm going to be able to create that book in the time allotted. And yeah, and I just get to work. I really just sit down and do it every day. That's incredible. How much time did it take you to, to finish the book? Six months. Timeless took me six months to write. Um, in, in total, like outlining it, preparing myself, do it, getting all of my my character arcs, knowing where I wanted it to end, where, where I wanted it to begin and where I wanted it to end. Um, that took me all of six months. It's kind of a long book, though. So. And how come you included Titans this time? You have Kronos, you have different, you have very different elements that you didn't have in Starcross before. Yeah, it feels different. Um, no, it doesn't feel different. Here's the thing. In the first three books, Helen and the Scions, all of her friends, they're sort of in this discovery process of what, where do they fit into this world, like the, the Greek mythology world that I've created for this. Um, and then they're, they're now well established. So now I can start adding these really fun elements, like how would these characters with what they can do and what they know about themselves now how do they interrelate with these huge mythological beings you know like what what would that meeting look like and um i don't know i i was since i have so many books under my belt now i felt like i could really play with this with more fun elements with more monsters and gods and and great big titans and stuff you know so uh, it was more like a playground situation for me. But I, I think it still feels like Starcrossed. It's not, it doesn't get, it doesn't go off the rails. It doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, this is so weird and so out there. I think it stays very much within the, the feeling of the world of Starcrossed. A hundred percent. Like you can definitely feel that familiarity and, um, and the tone changes though. I feel like you you grew with your books. Yeah. Um, how does it feel for you? Do you think you have changed a different kind of tone? I think I've I've grown as a writer. I've grown as a person. You know, I wrote the original book, Starcross, is 13, 14 years ago, something like that, when I came up with the idea for Helen and Lucas. And um I've just, I hope I've gotten better. Like that's sort of been my goal as a writer. I know I'll never write the perfect book, but for me, it's about trying to get better with every draft, every time I sit down to write, trying to become a better writer and use the tools that I know about, be more honest 
when I come to the page. Although I was super honest when I started writing Starcross. That really just came from the heart. Like I just cracked myself open and wrote that book, you know? Like I didn't I didn't overthink it. I wasn't like, what would a literary person do? No, I didn't do that. I just was like, I feel this story and I'm just gonna write it. Um, but now I, I try to make, you know, how do I make this better it has always been my process. And I wanna get better and better with every book because I, just doing the same thing over and over again isn't enough for me as a person. And I don't think it's enough for the readers. You know, I don't think they'd want to read the same kind of book over and over and over again either. So. Definitely. And mm -hmm. what kind of classical tropes did you play with in, in Timeless? Is there any kind of classic thing that you used? Because if you think about it, Starcrossed is a lot um the the trope of the star-crossed lovers the romeo and juliet trope um so what did you have in mind as a, a framework um so to say and so definitely time travel stories that was how i was going about it and i've read a lot of them and i think a lot of them it's like yeah that's great but it doesn't work like there's always this one moment where a paradox gets created and i was like how do I do a time travel story without creating a paradox? How do I do a time travel story that has meaning? Like they have to go back there and do something. But if you change an event, the future never happens. You know what I mean? So you, you never make the choice to time travel. Anyway, it's a conundrum. And it was something that I kept like asking myself, how do I make this a meaningful story using this trope, but using it in a slightly different way from the way that other people do? And that's the one that I'm working with. Because, you know, it's like every TV show, every series, of, there's always a time travel story line, like even a soap opera. It's like, we're going to go back in time now. She time travels. So, that, you know what I mean? It's, everybody does it. And it's very rarely done well. But I was like, maybe I can take a crack at it and see how I can use this to further Helen's storyline, not just not just to give myself something to do, but to add to this character and to add to this world. And that's what I tried to do with um, Timeless. I think it makes total sense in the story and it really adds something that you do, wouldn't get as a reader otherwise. Um, so it makes total sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. Who's your favorite character in Timeless, like from the new ones? I mean, Helen's always my favorite. Like she really, I just love her. I really do. I love Helen. I feel like you know, I've spent so many years with her in my head. I always gravitate towards her, but um, there, uh, yeah, it's it's always Helen for me. She's almost always my favorite. Understandably so. Yeah. Very much. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a story with gods and half gods and a few normal people in between what is the meta story for you like what do you want to convey and like what is the deeper meaning that you um want to give readers so this story oh god i don't want to i don't want to give a spoiler but there is a this story is about loss and um right when i was coming up not with the idea for it, but when I was outlining it, I recently suffered a loss in my life. Someone very important to me died. And I needed to put that someplace. And so I knew very one, one very specific thing was going to be happening in this book. Um, and what do you do when you lose somebody who has loomed so large in your mind for so long? And so this story, and I, it's a tough one. It, this, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a tough book. It feels like it's going to be, you know, hijinksy there, you know, the time travel element, meeting the Titans, interacting with these huge supernatural beings. But the real meta story beneath it is a story of loss. So buckle up if you're going to read it because <laughs> it has all the feels by the end. So and I think it kind of sneaks up on you in this book. But that was that was why I was writing it. I was also doing some processing of my own. But I'm not going to say who. I can't say a spoiler. Yeah. But who it is in the book is who it was in my life too. So that's amazing, and I think it's amazing to work through healing in a book 
and give that to other people because I think a lot of people can relate. And if it doesn't happen to you, you don't know how to work through it. So going through that catharsis through character is, is how you can learn without having to experience it, I think. Yeah. And it's also loss in general is something, it doesn't just have to be someone dying. And I think a lot of readers understand this, especially readers who read art, the genre that I write in. They understand that, you know, just because you don't, you're, you've never lost your best friend or your teacher or, or anything like that. They still understand loss and they still understand all the different and sometimes really confusing feelings that go along with that. Because sometimes when you lose someone, it's not just sadness. Sometimes you're just angry. <laughs> and I think that my fan base, like the Starcross fan base, really, they understand it's not just confronting this individual problem it's confronting that theme right they understand because a lot of the themes that we use in this they're hyper you know these they're hyperbolic they're these big you know star-crossed love the fates the actual fates are keeping you apart but they understand what it is to love someone and know that you can't be with that person for whatever reason and that's how they translate it into their lives so just losing someone or something important to you in general i think is something all of the all of my readers are going to connect with you know absolutely what does this book mean to you personally and how does it stand out from the series in your opinion yeah it's you know books you never really know what they mean until other people tell you what th that book is meant to them do you know what i mean i don't i know that sounds strange but when I'm writing a book, I'm working through thoughts and I'm also working through feelings and I'm going through the arcs with the characters. I'm going through those emotional journeys with them. And like we just talked about, you know, I had suffered a loss. So I was like, I'm going to use this, not use it. I'm going to understand it by writing it. And I'm going to re-understand it because, you know, it's, it's a cycle that you go through over and over again. Um, but I never really know what my books mean until other people tell me how they connected to it and what was the most important part of that for them. And then I go, that's why I did it. It's this really strange thing that happens after you write a book. Other people tell you where it fits into their lives and you go, me too. And you don't know it until after they told you. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> it's like, I don't, uh, yeah, I haven't figured that one out yet, but I never understand my books until years after I've written them. And then I kind of go, yeah, that's what that was. I get it now. <laughs> it makes sense because when you're writing, you're in a rush and you, you just make what, like you create what makes sense. And afterwards you probably look back and you're like, ah, that makes sense now. And then you process it and then you understand where it fits into the world and what it, where it fit into your life while you were writing it. But it, for me, it's always like a, a looking back at it thing. And then I know what that book meant, you know. So we'll see. Well, I'll let people tell me what timeless means to them and then maybe I'll figure it out for myself. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> um, you have told me in previous interviews that you write because you you write, like, because you've always written. Um, but what keeps you going? Because while you were sick, you you didn't write for a while, right? Yeah. Um, so what keeps you going and what makes you think that this is still what you should be doing? Right. Um, you know, I don't, what keeps me going? It's, I know how I write. I write because it's a part of my everyday life. It's a habit. I literally just sit down and that's how I think my way through my day is a part of that process for me of growing and learning as a person is writing every day. Um, and I'm a very, I'm a very structured person. Like I wake up at the same time I do. I'm very boring. Like I have this set routine that my life is in. Um, which is always, the routine is, the actions may be the same, but the process is always different. I'm always thinking about something different. I'm always going through something different. But I'm a very disciplined writer. Um, the reason why I keep doing it is just because I keep finding new things that I can't stop thinking about, that I can't not, I don't not want to say them, do you know? And whether or not 
people keep buying my books, it almost doesn't matter because it's sort of like I'm going through that process for myself. Um, it's just always been the way that I understand myself. And so in that, in the doing of it, it has value for me. And then when I'm fortunate enough to find out that it has value for other people too, even if it was just one other person who told me, oh my God, your book spoke to me. Now I get it. Or I, I didn't think anyone else felt that I'll keep doing it forever. As long as there's just one person who tells me that it added to their life. That's reason enough for me. It's, it's, it's all about, it's this weird delayed connection with people, <laughs> you know, but that's that, beautiful. Like, yeah. honestly, that, that resonated a lot. Um, yeah, d does it help you in your relationships with other people to write about other people's relationships? Does my question make sense? Like, when yeah. you go through a relationship while writing through it, does it make you grow while being in a relationship with other people as well? I hope so. I mean, I hope I've I've learned to understand people better, and I hope I've learned to be better to people over the course of my life and i hope it brings value to the relationships that i have like that i mean that's this is going to sound selfish that's not why i do it i do it more to understand myself and to understand what's going on in my head than anything else and then when i find other people who've read my books and they connect and they tell me what it means to them i feel this oh thank god you know what i mean like there's so much value in it for me it's not just a validation thing it really is about this like a deeper connection which there's so little of that nowadays like i don't know about you but there's so little deeper connection between people and um i definitely get it through my books that's amazing who's your <laughs> 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 Hi, that's my husband. <laughs> He's like going in and out. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Who's your favorite author? Like, who is your favorite writing inspiration? Oh, it's that's hard to say. Over the course of my life, there have been so many people who I've just I've just admired so deeply. You know, um. You know, like Anne McCaffrey, Marion Zimmer Bradley. I, she has a very checkered past right now, but her books meant a lot to me when I was when I was younger. Um, Pullman and the I've been deep, deep getting back into his dark materials for some reason. Like I read them years and years ago, and then now I'm back into them again. So I go through these these phases where I I don't. There are there are writers who. I sort of glom onto for particular parts of my life. Like there was a time when I was reading tons of Terry Pratchett and Douglas Adams because I needed that. I needed that humor. I needed that, that cleverness in my life. And um, I think that every book I read influences me in some way, L truly like every book I read. <laughs> and if a book hits me and I, and I love it, it's, I'm I'm a reader first before I'm a writer. It like my books mean so very much to me, <laughs> you know, and I internalize them so deeply. And I'm one I'm a rereader. Like I'll read a book over and over and over again if it hits me in a certain way because I want to understand how that author did it. Like how did they know I felt those feelings? How did they speak to me so deeply? And um, yeah, it it depends. It depends on what time. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, I would have sent one book. And if you were like, I would have been like, oh, my God, it's Pride and Prejudice. I can't, I can't put that book down. I've read it a million times. Um, but now it's different. Now I've moved on to other things and I'm thinking about other things. But I guess other authors just pretty much inspire me. Like I read stuff all the time where I'm like, oh, my God, that's so good. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, yeah. What is your favorite part in Timeless? My favorite part in time, it's the ending, even though it's hard. That ending, it, it was, fun. yeah, it, it was hard for me to write. Um, but it was something where when I was done, like, it was one of those, like, I stood up and I stretched and I'm like, and nobody knows it but me. And it was like this deeply rewarding moment, you know? So. I know. I, I've read the ending and I told you that I read the ending. <laughs> 
in the middle of the night and I had to go to work and I had to process everything that happened but I don't know like I'm so thrilled for the next things to come like I don't know what's coming and it's like uh, I don't know it's so difficult isn't it because you have these characters that you care about deeply for like 10 plus years now and like difficult things are happening to them yeah and then you kind of go, oh, do I want to put myself through this? And then you're like, well, I have to. And, um, yeah, yeah. Especially like the deeper you go into a series. I don't want to create melodrama. Like I don't want to fabricate big these dr dramatic situations. I want it to be stuff that could happen to any of us. Do you know, like the, the things and I just want to make them matter, you know. I'm having them happen, not like, oh, and she found his head in a freezer. I don't know. Some like weird <laughs> twist that people sometimes put. I don't want any of it to be like this, like a fabricated plot line. I want everything to feel like, oh, that that could ha that has happened to me in my life. And I know exactly what she's going through right now. Um, and just to keep putting those people through it. And that's, yeah. And you shouldn't know where it's going. It should be a big surprise. <laughs> But after you read it, you should have said, of course, that's exactly how, how else could it have happened? You know, those are always the best books when you have no idea what's going to happen. But by the time it ends, you go and there's no other way it could have happened, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, what do you want to keep your readers on their toes toes with? So what what can your readers expect oh, from the next books? So um, like what's coming? I'm actually editing Outcasts right now. So Outcast is another, it's the book that's coming out after Timeless, and it is another prequel book that follows along with Daphne, but the world spreads out. Like, it's um, multiple first-person points of view, so it's Daedalus, Adonis, Tantalus, Daphne, It's and then the my bad guy. We also get his POV. So it's like all of these different points of view, and um, it's sort of like this world gets broader and richer and then you start to see these little connections what happens in outcast is you start seeing all of these little connections you go oh my god that's what she was talking about in starcrossed or wow that i i remember that thing happening in dreamless it's like all of these connections start happening and for people who know the series it's just going to light them up they're going to be like ah that's what she meant when she wrote that like 10 years ago outcast i wasn't even going to write this book my editor, Laura, she's been my editor since Starcross. Like she edited Starcross for Harper Teen. Like I've been with her through the whole thing. She was the one who told me I had to write this book. Like after I wrote Science, she went, oh, no, 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 no. You got to write a book and you got to broaden all of the, you got to broaden this world and you got to, and I was like, I don't want to write another book. And she was like, you're going to. And I was like, okay, because I listened to Laura. <laughs> she tells me what to do. And there's so much in it that is going to make people go that it's really going to light the world up for people i think and all of these characters and the relationships that they have with their kids like daedalus and orion like you're really going to start to understand them and i can't wait i really can't wait for people to read it i can't wait either yeah. honestly <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we have endless to finish everything endless yep it's already written it's done but not edited yet it's done it's, i'm not saying a word but oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, for everyone that doesn't know how Timeless looks, it looks like this. And it's coming out on the 4th of April. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share that I haven't asked you about? No, I'm just... No! <laughs> like I, um, I guess there's nothing else I really need to say. Just working and working on the next book and I'm very excited for people to to see what happens next <laughs> I'm terrible I'm stopping myself from talking right now because I'm like yes I want to talk about this but then it will be a spoiler so I'm going to shut up right now <laughs> okay we'll end on this note uh thank you so much for joining my channel once again and I can't wait for the book to come out thank you Ison.